SWAT teams were first created in the 1960s to help with riot control and violent criminals. But what exactly goes into the training, and is it something you're cut out to do? Hey guys, what's going on? Hope you're having a fantastic weekend so far. SWAT, or Special Weapons and Tactics, is a pretty universally known acronym by now. Movies, TV shows, all show these different types of SWAT teams from all over the United States. And while Hollywood tries their best at creating a very accurate depiction of a SWAT team, what really goes into the time, the training, and what's it really all about? A little background for those of you that are new to the channel, I have been a police officer since the early part of 2008, so almost 12 years. I did my first two years on the road as a patrol officer, and then I did my next two years as a traffic enforcement officer. About the same time that I went to traffic, I put in for SWAT and I passed the test, and I was on the team for four and a half years. We didn't have a full-time SWAT team, so the SWAT team was actually comprised of officers from various divisions. We had officers from the patrol division, I was in traffic, we had officers from the drug squad, so on and so forth. We trained every two weeks for between four to eight hours, it just depended on how things went. The eventual reason of why I left the SWAT team was our SWAT commander at the time got promoted to chief of police and therefore could not be the SWAT commander anymore. So a new SWAT commander was assigned to the team and he was more focused on the physical fitness aspect of SWAT training, which is okay, that's understandable. But when you only are allotted eight to 16 hours a month of training, I think it's crucial that teams focus more on tactical situations and save the PT to do on their own. He, however, wanted half the training to just be nothing but running around in circles in full gear, so I decided to bounce. So first of all, what are the qualifications to become a SWAT member? The first thing to remember is that every department is different and you are going to have different policies and procedures that are in place for the SWAT teams. I get emails and Instagram messages and messages on different platforms every single day from people asking me, how can I get on SWAT? How can I prepare for the tryouts? And the simple answer is, I have no idea. Every department, every agency is going to be different in their requirements for what they do for SWAT tryouts. Some are more focused on the very traditional 1.5 mile run, push-ups, sit-ups, things like that. And other SWAT teams are kind of moving forward in they are going to put you through the ringer. It's going to be more of a CrossFit, total body, just pure exhausting exercise. When I went through SWAT tryouts, we did our tryouts at the shooting range. And the tryouts consisted of putting on full gear, having to sprint, run an obstacle course, shoot, use a battering ram, and there was always a point in this testing where everybody got tired and that was usually after the low crawl. So we had to put on full gear and you would already run part of the obstacle course and then after this low crawl, that's what got most people. Let's say you pass all your testing, what comes next? Usually you're going to go to your SWAT commander or you're going to go to somebody in your training division or maybe a uh, uniform distribution person and they are going to issue you your gear. SWAT gear usually consists of things like less lethal weapons, upgraded body armor, some type of rifle, usually something like a UMP or an MP5, maybe an AR. Then when you get issued all of your gear, you basically hop into training. A lot of departments will send you to an official SWAT school. I don't know about other states, but in Georgia, you get sent to the Georgia Public Safety Training Center, which I call Gypstick. You've heard me say that in other videos. 
uh, in Forsyth, Georgia, and it is a week-long SWAT school that you are supposed to attend with other people from your department. So if, let's say there's a group of you that try out and there's like three of you that pass, you three will probably go to SWAT school together. I don't know about other states, but in Georgia, you are not required to attend this SWAT school to be on a SWAT team. Some small departments in Georgia can't afford to send two or three people to the school, uh, so they just kind of train with maybe some outside jurisdiction in order to get their training. SWAT school is no joke. From the time you get there, they sit you down and you have to shoot at least a 90% on the shooting range or they send you home the very first day. So what are some of the pros and cons of being on a SWAT team? And I'm going to first start with the pros. The number one thing is you get some amazing training. Collaborating with people within your team or working with outside jurisdictions is a great way to hone your skills you are going to be obtaining tactical training that is not offered to normal patrol officers. Pro number two, you get some badass equipment. Between the rifles, the less lethal, the upgraded body armor, you are going to have an arsenal with you at all times. Number three, improved physical fitness. If you weren't in shape before, you definitely will be after you join SWAT. Some departments are kind of lax on their requirements as far as maintaining a physical fitness, but any good department will have a regular PT regimen. And of course, the last pro is prestige. Who doesn't want to say that they have been a part of a SWAT team before? Now let's talk about some of the cons. The first and foremost, and this is probably my biggest pet peeve in anything I do, being on call. You are going to be on call 24 hours a day indefinitely. It's not like detectives where they rotate out an on-call schedule. You are literally on call 24 hours a day. And don't think for a second that you're going to get a phone call as you like gently wake up for work in the morning and you're about to get ready anyway. Oh no, you are going to get called at your first bite of dinner, the moment you finally get some time with your kids at the end of the day after working all day, or when you're trying to have some alone time with your partner. So yeah, it's always going to work out where you get called out at the most inconvenient times. The second con to being on the SWAT team is depending on your department size and whether you have a police union or not, and the list goes on, you might be doing training on your own time. Cities that don't have a union or a decent budget might either flex your time or they might not pay you at all for your SWAT training. They might tell you that you wanted the position, you signed up for it so you can do it on your own. And last but not least is the obvious. SWAT is dangerous you are going to be dealing with the worst people in your city that are too dangerous for regular patrol officers to apprehend. And believe me, it is not glamorous like you see in the movies. There are going to be times where you might be standing in full gear on the side of a wall waiting for a suspect to come out because it's too dangerous to go in for six, seven or more hours. And trust me, standing in full gear for six hours is not fun. So before you decide to join a SWAT team after you have become a police officer, make sure it's something you really want to do. If you're only doing it for the weapons and the prestige, don't do it. But if you're looking to hone your skills and further your training and improve, then I say go for it. Anyway guys, that is it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to address them accordingly. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend and I will see you guys very, very soon.